Welcome to TSAT. Today friends, I am going to introduce uh, environmental issues to you. In this context, we need to know what environment uh, is and what is environmental ecology. So, in this context, uh, uh, environment is the habitat uh, in which we are living. So, in this uh, habitat, uh, we have got uh, uh, both uh, biotic aspects and uh, abiotic aspects. In this process for survival and for the process of development, we need to exploit the resources in the environment. In this process of exploitation of resources, uh, we are destructing the environment uh, because there is a resilient capacity for uh, every ecosystem. In the process of exploitation of resources, when we break the resilient capacity of an ecosystem, the capability of an ecosystem to cope up back, uh, even though you have destructed, loses by the ecosystem. In this process, the ecosystem itself collapses. So, that is the reason why, as an administrator in future, to execute the policies uh, framed by the government uh, to protect the environment, uh, as an executive, you need to be very clear and you need to understand the environmental phenomena and the ecosystems. That is the reason why this has been made part of your uh, entrance examination uh, because uh, you need to know about environment. So, in this context, uh, I am going to introduce you what environmental ecology is. In the environmental ecology, we, studies, we study about these different kinds of aspects. One is ecology. So, ecology is the study of uh, ecosystems the relationship between the biotic and abiotic aspects, what are the different kinds of living beings we have got in the environment, how do they interact with the abiotic aspects in the environment will be part of uh, ecology. It studies about biodiversity, biodiversity means bio means life. The existing different diversified life forms, what are the different variant types of plants, what are the different variant types of uh, animals. What are the different variant types of microorganisms? How do they vary in different ecosystems? In the equators, in savanna, in the tropics, in the temperate, in the polar regions. Every latitude or a geographical region uh, is being demarcated into climatic zones on the basis of uh, uh, the temperature or precipitation conditions. Accordingly, the living beings have adopted to these uh, territories, uh, developing a unique. Uh, ecosystems uh, in different regions. In an uh, ecosystem, when you have classified into uh, an ecosystem, there will be a homogeneity in terms of uh, flora and fauna, homogeneity in terms of environment, uh, environmental conditions, uh, in terms of weather and climatic conditions. Based on these factors, uh, you can demarcate an uh, ecosystem. Next topic which we will be discussing is uh, ecological succession. So, the existing uh, life forms in different ecosystems uh, have not been created as it is. They are the resultant of evolution. In this process of evolution, uh, different species in terms of flora and fauna and even in terms of microorganisms uh, have been subjected to evolution. Succession of uh, species one after the another which has led to conversion of uh, simple to complex species. In this process, uh, uh, you have got uh, different types of communities uh, being explained uh, in ecosystems uh, known as these um, uh, climax species, uh, etc. So, depending upon these, uh, uh, the climax species means the species which have been uh, finally been established in the process of evolution is described as a climax species. So, uh, climax species is the resultant of ec ecological succession. So, for example, we discuss about climate change. So, the way the atmosphere is changing in terms of its precipitation capability, temperature, and cap temperature capability, composition capability, etc. Because of any different factors, what is happening is uh, uh, gradually uh, there is a change happening. This change happening is both natural and uh, man-made. So, what are the factors which are natural responsible for climate change? Uh, what are the factors responsible for 
uh, climate change because of man constitutes this uh, climate change phenomena and the consequences of climate change and the measures need to be taken uh, to avoid this climate change what are the uh, domestic uh, laws you need to execute to avoid this what are the international conventions being made uh, to avoid this kind of climate change we need to go across next is conservation so to preserve the biodiversity what are the measures need to be taken to preserve the existing climatic and weather conditions what are the pre precautionary measures need to be taken constitutes conservation conservation means trying to preserve the conditions as it is by nature in terms of ecology the, this is where this chapter deals with next we need to deal with environmental pollution what is pollution what are the different ways of pollution how it happens what are the precautionary measures need to be taken constitutes about this uh, chapter next is uh, environmental degradation what are the factors responsible for the degradation of the environment and how to control it uh, next chapter is environmental impact assessment means uh, in this process of exploitation of resources what happens is that the environment degrades in this process of the rate of degradation need to be estimated because i have already mentioned that uh, every ecosystem has got a resilient capability or the re the resilient capability so you need to know whether we are crossing this the, this resilient capability so to know whether we are crossing or not you need to always estimate uh, or observe the changes happening to the environment in terms of uh, the composition of the air temperature conditions quality of the soil biodiversity species extinction in different ways uh, you have to estimate in different dimensions possible precautionary measures need to be taken to that particular aspect way to take and you will be able to know uh, when you are able to study the changes happening in different dimensions both biotic and abiotic next is international conventions and national legislations which i have discussed uh, uh the measures taken uh, here to uh, control uh, the environmental changes happening which are negative the current aspects uh, we need to discuss for example the glasgow conference happened uh, regarding climate change is an example of current aspects uh, of uh, environmental aspects which we need to study the environment has got certain spheres first of all before getting into the environment we need to know what are the different spheres of environment these are the different spheres of environment atmosphere is a sphere of uh, environment for example biosphere is uh, an example of uh, a sphere of environment biosphere consists of uh, bio means life so the plants animals and microbes constitutes the biosphere atmosphere consists of the air uh the composition constitutes the atmosphere the hydrosphere constitutes the water bodies the oceans the rivers the lakes etc constitutes uh, the hydrosphere and the lithosphere constitutes the soil and rocks constitutes the lithosphere so uh when we study all these aspects uh, then only environmental aspects can be understood in a holistic manner these are the different spheres we need to deal with it to understand environment this is how the lithosphere the biosphere and the atmosphere interacts for the survival of the eco system so the ecology deals with the study of organisms in their natural home interacting with their surroundings so in this process of our survival whether it is a man or any other living being has to interact with the environment for example uh, in the process of constructing our houses we need to excavate Uh, to manufacture cement or iron or sand uh, etc we are uh, uh, we are destructing the environment so the way we interact and the way the rest of the living beings interact uh, is in a different manner for example a plant interacts with the environment for example the plants absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen but we intake oxygen and we release carbon dioxide so the way of interaction varies from um, species to species how it happens uh, will be part of environmental studies so an ecosystem is a self regulating group of uh, biotic communities of species interacting with one another and with their non living environment exchanging energy and matter
So what do you mean by this? All these living beings interact with the non-living beings, the non-living aspects. For example, right now, for example, you are breathing air. So can we survive without uh, breathing uh, air? We cannot survive because oxygen is in a continuous requirement. We are interacting continuously with the abiotic aspect. The classic example is breathing in air is a classic example of uh, interacting with the environment. So, all the living beings interact in a different manner. In this process, there is exchange of uh, energy and matter for our survival. So, how this phenomenon of exchange of energy and matter is happening, we shall discuss. Ecosystems can range from large forests, deserts or grasslands to a small ponds. Ecosystems can be natural or man-made. So, you have got uh, aquatic ecosystems, for example, uh, the marine environment, the oceans, the lakes, the rivers can be given as an example of uh, aquatic ecosystems. The forest, the terrestrial ecosystems, you have got the forests, uh, uh, the deserts, uh, the ice caps, the glaciers, you have got uh, different uh, regions of uh, uh, the topographical features of the earth uh, having different uh, ecosystems uh, which are man-made and which are natural. So, what are the examples of ecosystems which are natural? What are the examples of ecosystems which are man-made? I uh, will be giving you some examples here. So, uh, in the case of scope and importance of ecosystems, what are the areas which we need to study? Uh, ecosystems are the habitats for flora and fauna. So, all the living animals, plants and animals live in an ecosystem. The habitat which we are living is considered as an ecosystem. Ecosystem provides resources for the purpose of development, food, clothes and shelter. So, whatever it may be, the essential food which we are consuming, the clothes which we are wearing, the houses which are being constructed, industry, raw material, what not. Every source is being extracted and exploited from the environment. That is the reason why ecosystems are very much important for the purpose of development. Ecosystems regulate the flow of matter and energy. So, the amount of energy which we are receiving, the matter, you are, the, you are, we are, the accumulation of matter, we are made up of matter. From where we have got uh, our, the, got our uh, material or the body with which we are made up of, this is being acquired, accumulated uh, through the process of consuming food. From where this food you have acquired? From the plants. From where these plants have acquired? Plants are autotrophs which have prepared their food material by observing certain materials from the atmosphere and the soil. So, how this energy, this uh, process is known as photosynthesis. The energy essential to make this uh, metabolism known as photosynthesis is being uh, done by uh, done by a catalyst uh, known as the sunlight in the presence of chlorophyll. So, how this energy is being fixed into the plants uh, is studied in this process and how the energy flows. Ecosystem helps conserve soil and build soil organic matter. So, here in this context, uh, what happens is, uh, uh, for example, what is soil? Soil is a combination of uh, organic and inorganic composition. Inorganic composition is derived from the weathered and eroded rock. Organic matter is being derived from the decayed, uh, dead uh, plants and animals. So, when these two compositions mix, it results in the formation of a uh, soil. The soil is a very essential uh, resource because without which cultivation cannot happen. So, here in this context, when you do not have vegetation or a topographical region, the plants will be holding the soil tight intact without being subjecting to weathering and erosion. So, that what happens is the essential nutrients in terms of iron, nitrogen, calcium, potassium, magnesium, Whatever it may be, the phosphorus are being absorbed from the soil by the plants and we consume the product, products synthesized by the plants 
and we are uh, accumulating in your body through the process of uh, nutrition or digestion uh we are acquiring the essential material so without uh, a part of ecosystem known as vegetation without holding the soil the essential nutrients cannot be preserved so that is the reason why soil really is very much important uh, and uh, building soil organic matter so here the organic matter which is been derived from uh, dead plants and animals uh, are been uh, preserved in the soil by the roots of the plants so that is the reason why uh, soil is very much important by this time you might have understood why soil is so important uh, and next is we will be discussing in detail in other uh, in other episodes regarding the importance of soil ecosystem help to purify air and water so for example plants absorb carbon dioxide so it controls the amount of carbon dioxide reducing the pollution the vegetation in the catchment region of a river basin will prevent the weathering and erosion when the water soil is been held tight by the roots of the plant not subjecting to weathering and erosion the roots of the plant provides larger pore spaces which helps in increasing the rate of percolation of water increasing the level of water table so in this context what happens is the underground water increases because of which uh, it leads to avoiding surface run of water surface run off of water leading to floods so increasing the vegetation in ecosystem avoids floods preserves water only allows the water slowly to to drip slowly in the underground to the slope gradient slop, supplying water continuously throughout the year to the river basins into the river channels from the higher catchment regions these higher catchment regions with vegetation and roots in the soil acts as a sponge holding the soil releasing the water dripping drip by drip throughout the year avoiding floods in the absence of this the surface runoff increases increasing in floods in rainy season and drought in the summer season so that is the importance of uh, ecosystems degradation of uh, uh, rock results in the formation of the soil so as i have already discussed that the weathering and erosion of rock leads to the formation of soil the soil inorganic matter is the resultant of weathering and erosion organic matter is derived from the dead uh, plants and animals the concept of ecosystem an ecosystem is an integrated unit uh, consisting of uh, interacting communities of plants animals and microorganisms whose survival depends upon the maintenance and regulation of their structure and their function so what do you mean by this is ecosystem has got a structure ecosystem's structure is been divided on the basis of trophic levels each trophic level in an ecosystem is been divided on the basis of uh, basis of the mode of uh, acquiring nutrition so uh, and each trophic level and each species in an ecosystem has got a function so if you are able to know the reason why the ecosystem is been divided into structure and function you will be able to clearly understand the importance of an ecosystem the importance of trophic levels the importance of biodiversity in the case of an ecosystem uh, which i will be elaborating ecosystem has got a uh, certain components here so what are the different components as i have specified ecosystems contain components like abiotic components and biotic components abiotic means a components of an ecosystem which doesn't have life so climatic factors are factors of ecosystem which doesn't have life edaphic factors means uh, uh, soil factors which doesn't have life so soil organisms live in the soil like microorganisms and macroorganisms like uh, the earthworms termites uh, etc live in the soil so which are known as soil organisms so the climatic factors like the rain the intensity of solar flux or light the wind and temperature impact an ecosystem uh, constitutes the abiotic factors the amount of rainfall because without water living beings cannot survive the more the amount of water 
the amount of living beings surviving in ecosystem are more less the amount of water less is the vegetation less is the animals so water plays a very major role uh, in an ecosystem next light the more the sunshine the more the plant grows in the absence of sunshine even uh, there is water the plants cannot grow because plants can, cannot grow the fauna doesn't develop much so that is how light and uh, precipitation impacts the ecosystem the wind uh, the directional flow of wind from uh, a polar region to a temperate region or from a tropical region to a temperate region impacts the temperature condition of a region because equatorial air in terms of trades or tropics the temperature or region is been modified warmer the winds from the polar regions and subpolar regions towards temperate and tropics modify the environment cooler and colder so the temperature conditions of an ecosystem is been influenced by the prevailing winds also next is the temperature so the more the temperature the less the temperature depending upon the availability of water uh, the rate of evaporation is been impacted accordingly an ecosystem is been modified so every aspect been projected to you is very much important in modifying the ecosystem soil edaphic factors so here the soil uh, factors here for example the soil the soil is not the same it varies from the black cotton soil the alluvial soil the laterite uh, the red uh, the desert soils the sandy soils uh, vary from region to region because of which the mineral composition the nutritional value the organic composition the water holding capability is not the same impacting the life over a region for example the biodiversity in the thar desert and the biodiversity in the gangetic plain variation is because of uh, soil the ph level the potency the potential of a substance to release hydrogen ion uh, so which determines the acidic and basic nature impacts the uh, biodiversity because each living being uh, got adopted to a ph level when there is change in the ph level the organisms which can survive in a region is being impacted so for example if the soil turns acidic because of acid rain the bacteria in the soil dies which is natural dominating uh, dominated by a fungus so the ph even impacts the living beings the with the increasing in the ph leading to acidity uh, the leaves lose their uh, the leaves lose their waxy coat and uh, the leaves decay very fast the the minerals available the sodium potassium magnesium iron if the iron is absent in the case of uh, uh, soil chlorophyll cannot be made properly because iron is essential uh, to make chlorophyll when chlorophyll is absent in the plants uh, animals cannot get iron in their blood which is essential to carry oxygen so it impacts both the flora and fauna the mineral composition in the soil impacts the flora and fauna topography for example the slope gradient the type of crops you can cultivate in the slopes of uh, himalayas or western ghats are different the type of crops where the slope gradient is less in the case of indo gangetic factors are different natural ecosystems or artificial ecosystems are also been influenced by the topographical features these are all the different uh, abiotic components in the case of uh, abiotic components uh, you have got uh, uh, different biotic components like producers consumers and uh, decomposers producers means these are plants or green plants are considered as producers which are responsible for uh, photosynthesis which are which is responsible for making food material on these plants all the organisms in the ecosystem are dependent upon directly or indirectly that is the reason why they are known as producers consumers are organisms which are heterotrophs which cannot prepare their own food material which depend upon other organisms might be animals or plants are known as heterotrophs the next type of biotic factors are decomposers decomposers here implies 
like any organisms a microorganism like bacteria which breaks the macromolecules and degrades the uh, elements in them into micro elements uh, which are made available to the plants to reabsorb again which are helpful in the recycling of matter in the environment so these are the basic uh, biotic components being classified into producers consumers and decomposers the consumers are further been classified into primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and quaternary consumers or otherwise also known as predators so in the case of primary consumers the primary consumers are also been described as herbivores herbivores means animals which are dependent only on plants are considered as primary consumers the secondary consumers depend upon primary consumers the secondary consumers are otherwise also known as carnivores for example or uh, take the case of uh, a, a lizard is a carnivore a garden lizard is a carnivore a snake is a carnivore so in the case of primary consumers a deer a grasshopper can be considered as a, a primary consumer next is the tertiary consumer for example uh, a lizard eating a, a grasshopper or a hawk consuming a lizard or a snake can be considered as a tertiary consumer next is the quaternary consumer or the predator is one which hunts but which cannot be hunted so here uh, at this uh, at this place or uh, the topmost place of the ecosystem in the structure of this trophic level of a, a predator uh, we have occupied this position in all the ecosystems might be aqua aquatic ecosystems or the terrestrial ecosystems because we are hunting every animal possible if for example previously a uh, tiger or a lion can be placed as a predator but they have lost their place because you are hunting these animals to extinction so because a predator cannot be hunted so you have occupied that position so man is a predator because we are catching fish in the marine environment we are catching uh, whales we are catching sharks what not possible everything so that is the reason why the natural predators like for example the orca is a predator in marine environment tiger is a predator naturally in our forests but they have lost their status because we are hunting all these animals possible so these are the different components of ecosystem ecosystems are classified in different ways so uh ecosystems have been classified on the basis of uh, exchange of uh, water and energy matter and energy uh so they are been classified into open ecosystems and uh, closed ecosystems on the basis of exchange of matter and energy in the case of open ecosystems and closed ecosystems in an open ecosystem energy is exchanged in from the ecosystem from the outside of the ecosystem ecosystem where there is a free exchange of matter and energy are open ecosystem whereas in the case of closed ecosystem where there is no exchange of uh, nutrients from outside example space shuttle can be considered as an example of a closed ecosystem which is man made ecosystems can also be classified into natural ecosystem and man made ecosystem so when uh, naturally existing an ecosystem is uh, we call we can call it as a natural ecosystem example prairies uh, savannas can be given as an example of the deciduous forest or the equatorial evergreen or the tropical evergreen can be given as an example of natural ecosystem for example in the case of man made ecosystems the indo gangetic plain can be given as a man made ecosystem or the agriculture so we have removed the natural forest at a region and you, we have created a, a different kind of agriculture which is not uh, which is not uh, natural so these are examples of man made ecosystem the classic example is uh, uh, the gangetic plain or the aquarium which you maintain at your home uh, fishes which you have in the, in the water in an aquarium can be given as an example of a ma man made ecosystem third way of classifying ecosystem is 
terrestrial ecosystems and aquatic ecosystems. So, so the ecosystem exists existing on the land are known as terrestrial ecosystems. For example, uh, having a distinct climate uh, and species like the equatorial evergreen or the savanna or the tropical deciduous or the taiga, the different uh, regions in the earth. And the second way of, of classifying is uh, aquatic ecosystems. Aquatic ecosystems are being classified into marine ecosystems, freshwater ecosystems, brackish water ecosystems. Uh, this is another way of uh, classifying uh, ecosystems. So, these are different uh, terrestrial ecosystems existing at different latitudes. So, okay friends, we shall meet in the next topic uh, discussing about the structure of the ecosystem. Thank you.